Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at some examples. It says if a number is increased by 5, then divided by 2, the result is 7. Find the number. So the first thing we're going to do is let our unknown, I guess, be x or whatever you would like, or n. We'll say x is the number. Then we're going to translate. The number is increased by 5, then divided by 2, the entire thing is divided by 2, and the result equals 7. So there's our equation. Now all we have to do is solve the equation, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 2, and that's going to be x plus 5 equals 14, subtract 5, and x is equal to 9, so we say the number is 9. Example 2 says a rectangle that is 5 inches longer than it is wide has a perimeter of 60 inches. Find the width. So I'm going to let the width be x. And then it says it's 5 inches longer than it is wide. So the length must be 5 inches longer. And it's longer than it is wide. So that's x plus 5. And then they give us the perimeter. Well, we know that the perimeter is equal to 2 times l plus 2 times w. So P, in this case, is going to be 60 inches. The length gets substituted from our picture up above as x plus 5, and the width we called x. Then all we have to do is solve this equation. So the equation is solved. We distribute, combine like terms, and then isolate the x. So the rectangle is 12.5 inches wide, which is what we were asked for. Example 3 says the measure of the largest angle in a triangle is twice uh, the measure of the smallest angle. The third angle is 10 less than the largest angle. Find the measure of each angle. So I'm supposed to find the measure of each angle, and the key here is um, that I have three different angles. So there's three different things that I can let x be, or my unknown be, and I'm going to see what all of them depend on. The measure of the largest angle is twice the measure of the smallest angle. So that one depends on the smallest angle. The third angle is 10 degrees less than the largest angle. And the third angle apparently depends on the largest angle. So depending on how I want to go about this problem, I, I can either let x be the smallest angle or the largest angle because I see an interdependence between things. I'm going to go ahead and let x be the smallest angle and then use the sentence the largest angle is twice the smallest angle. So 2x must be the largest angle. And the next sentence says the third angle is 10 degrees less than the largest angle. Well, here is the largest angle right here. And it's 10 degrees less than that. That gives us the third angle. So we have all three angles labeled in terms of x. Now in order to find the measure of each angle, I have to find x so that I can find these other two guys that depend on x. And I'm going to use the formula for the angles of a triangle, adding up and equaling to 180. Remember, three angles of a triangle always add up to equal to 180, and then I solve that equation. So we've solved the equation for x, and we found x to be 38 degrees. And up above, 38 degrees belongs to x which is the smallest angle. And then we have twice the smallest angle, um, which is going to be, what, 76 degrees, is the largest angle. And then 10 degrees less than that largest angle, which is 66 degrees, is the third angle. And we can check our work. Uh, if we add up those angles that we just found, they do add up to 180. Example 4. Two cars are traveling in opposite lanes on a freeway. And two hour and a half hours after they meet, they are 30, 355 miles apart. So th this is important. That's important. And one car is traveling at 6 miles per hour faster than the other car. Find the speed of each car. So we're looking for speeds. We're going to be using the formula distance equals rate times time. And so we're going to draw a diagram. Um, they're on opposite uh, lanes. One goes to the right, let's say one goes to the left. 
and after two and a half hours, they are 355 miles apart. So the time that has elapsed is two and a half hours. And they've both been on the road for two and a half hours driving. We know that fact. So we can fill in the fixed time for each one of them. Um, the distance I can't put 355 because that's their combined distance. And I can see that car one, which was slower, has gone less distance than car two which was faster. Now the question asks for their speed so I have to have the, my unknown x or whatever variable you use in the rate box or the speed box. So let's say car 1 is the slow one, that speed will be x and then uh, the one of the other cars, the faster one, um, is traveling 6 miles per hour faster than the other car. So if this is the slower one, 6 miles per hour faster would be x plus 6. Now using these two boxes, I can fill in the distance box in terms of those variables. Rate times time is the distance for car 1 and rate times time is also the distance for car 2. And I also know that the combined distance from my picture is 355 miles. So the equation must be that the combined distance which is partial distance plus the other partial distance by the faster car equals the total 355 miles. And then we solve that equation. So we just found x equal to 68, which refers us back to the speed of the slower car. So 68 miles per hour is car 1 in our case. And then 6 miles per hour faster, so let's add 6 to that and we're going to end up with 74 miles per hour for the speed of car 2. Okay, first an athlete jogs at 6 miles per hour and then jogs at 5 miles per hour traveling 7 miles in 1.3 hours. How long did the athlete jog at each speed? So we're looking for two different things related to time because it said how long. Again, we're going to use d equals rt, distance equals rate times time. So we draw a diagram here. The athlete at first runs at 6 miles per hour, then slows down and runs at 5 miles per hour. And we do know that the total distance covered by this athlete is 7 miles. And the time that elapsed overall through this trip was 1.3 hours. We're looking to see how long was done at each speed. So was it like 0.3 hours and 1 hour? Was it 0.6 hours and 0.7 hours? How did the time elapse? How did it get split between the two things that he did or the two speeds that he covered? So I'm going to set up a chart for the two things that he did. He went fast and then he slowed down and whatever I get for my boxes I'm going to multiply the rate and the time and put it in the distance box. So we do know for sure that he ran at 6 miles per hour when he was fast and at 5 miles per hour when he was slower. Question says how long, so our variable will most likely be in the time box. How long did, he, uh, did the athlete jog at each speed? Well, I don't know. I do know that the overall time was 1.3 hours, but I don't know how it got split over the two time pieces. So I'm just going to randomly call this guy x because I don't know. Now I can't call the other one x because then it would say that it's the same time. And uh, I don't know that for sure. So what I am going to do is say, well, whatever time went here, the leftover must be for the other piece because their total is 1.3 hours. For example, if he took 3 hours, then the leftover, if, I, if 1 hour went here, the leftover would be 2 hours for this one. So x went to one of them and 1.3 minus x is really like the leftover time for the other box. Once I have that, I'm just going to multiply them through and put them in the distance box. And then I do know from the diagram that the total distance that the athlete covered was 7 miles. So that gives me my equation to solve. I have 6x plus 5 times 1.3 minus x equals the total 7 miles and we solve that equation. So we solved the equation and found x to be 0.5 
and x was in our time box for the fast speed, which was 6 miles per hour. So at 6 miles per hour, um, he ran for 0.5 of an hour, or half an hour, and 1.3 minus 0.5 is going to leave us with 0.8, so he ran at 5 miles per hour, he ran for 0.8 of an hour. So that's the time for each of the pieces of his strip.